Hey everybody, so today's video post is about dieting. Um, I know that one of the main things that everybody hears when they get diagnosed with PCOS is that you have to change your diet. Everything about what you eat switches and it's kind of trial and error about what kind of diet you decide to go on. I know in the beginning when I first got diagnosed, I really switched to um, cutting out a lot of meat, especially red meat. Um, everything became organic. Um, if I was having chicken, it was going to be organic chicken. Then I went predominantly vegetarian. Um, so no more meat. I was eating a lot of Boca patties, um, Amy's organic Boca patties, or I was eating a lot of beans and lentils and trying not to do anything sort of boxed or processed as well. So, um, it's definitely challenging to have PCOS and try to figure out a diet. Um, I have managed since my diagnosis to drop about 67 pounds on my own. Um, when I first started, I originally weighed about 262, um, which it's hard to recall that now um, that I weigh 165. Um, but there's, there's additional things that I did that helped me drop like almost a full hundred pounds. Uh, so in the beginning, I was doing a lot more vegetables, I was doing a lot more egg whites, I was doing no um, regular milk whatsoever, and if anyone was cooking anything for me um, with milk, it had to be organic milk. Uh, I switched to almond milk. I don't really do soy milk because I know we're not supposed to have a lot of soy products, or we're supposed to have more soy products. It really depends on which research you read. Um, but mostly I do almond milk. Um, I also do a lot of gluten-free food because uh, I know that gluten is sometimes related to PCOS and insulin and how our body processes gluten. Uh, it may be different. I definitely saw a considerable difference in switching to gluten-free food. Um, I felt less sick after I would eat carbs or um, anything like that. And I definitely noticed that I felt a lot better eating more vegetables and less meat. And then, you know, I got off the 60, about 60 pounds by myself and I hit like that giant brick wall in weight loss, um, which everybody hits. Eventually you get to a point where no matter how much working out you do or how much eating you do um, or calorie counting you do, it is going to help you lose weight. Um, so currently I signed up to do Metafast, which is a very restrictive diet. Um, it's not for everybody. I definitely don't recommend it if you cave on a regular basis and you need to eat bread or you need to have something with sugar in it because you definitely don't get to do that with this. Um, and I was pretty restrictive myself when I was doing my own diet plan and my own low GI kind of eating just because I really wanted to get the weight off. Everyone said that that's what, you know, cured your symptoms or at least dissipated some of them and would help with the hormone fluctuation and so I did everything I possibly could. Everything became all about cooking more at home, no fast food, no cake, uh, no chocolate, no diet soda. I stand, stand, stand behind no diet soda. I don't care how bad you want caffeine or how bad you want sugar. Diet soda should be drank very sparingly, if at all. I occasionally may have one a month. Um, but really, I don't like anything that's in it. I don't like any of the, the chemicals they put in it. I don't like any of the fake sugar that they have in it. It really does nothing for people with PCOS except spike your insulin. So stay away from it. Um, I definitely switched to nothing but water and unsweet green tea if I was going to, you know, feel brave and have a craving for something other than water. Um, but anyway, so with Metafast, it's basically packaged. It is not the best thing to be doing for PCOS, but it is getting the rest of my weight off. Um, it is expensive. <laughs> I will not lie about that. Uh, but I really wanted to get this last 40 pounds that I have off of me and I was committed to doing that. Um, once this is over, I have a nutritionist that helps me transition certain foods back into my eating regimen. Um, it's a very controlled thing. I meet someone every Friday and have a weigh in. Um, it's, uh, very critical. It's kind of, you know, super controlling of your food, which is not always the best thing for some people because I know a lot of women with PCOS also have a side effect of eating disorder because we have to be so picky about what we put in our bodies. Um, 
and since I've been on Metafast since mid-January, I have dropped another 20 pounds. So it is working for me. I don't swear by it. I don't want to say that it's the, the answer to everyone's weight loss, but it is working for me. Um, and for me, diet goes right into exercise. I, you know, think that diet is very important, but it's also about what you're doing to counterbalance what you eat. If you sit around eating chips and bread and rice, even if it's whole grain, you're still getting a huge amount of carbs. And for women with PCOS, it's all about the least amount of carbs possible. And you can get carbs from vegetables. It does not have to be in the form of a Subway sandwich or, you know, veggie pizza. I mean, I love pizza. Pizza is my favorite food. I could sit down and still eat a whole one if I wanted to by myself. But, you know, you have to choose not to do that. Um... So I get my carbs elsewhere. I definitely get it through vegetables. I get it through protein shakes if I'm going to have it. I use whey protein shakes. Um, and in the beginning when I, I was at my heaviest, I spent two hours a day in the gym. I paid for a trainer for three days a week. I read every article I could find on exercise, on running. I did couch to 5K. Now I can run three to eight miles on any given day, no sweat. Um, but it takes time and you can't half-ass commit to this. You have to change your life. It is not a diet. It is not trying to get hot. It is saving your freaking life. It is making sure that you can potentially have a kid if that's your goal. It's about making sure you don't get cervical cancer. It's about making sure you don't get breast cancer, endometriosis, or leading to other things. It's about not becoming diabetic. I mean, I was lucky that I didn't start out with any kind of diabetic symptoms, but Either way, it's still something you got to worry about. And that's why, you know, people think sometimes, you know, I'm too focused on my eating. I'm too focused on my diet. I'm too focused on my on my running. I'm too focused on my weight loss. And some people find it bitchy and some people think that I'm cocky or I am smug about it. No, it's because I've busted my ass for almost two years. I mean, that's, I have more dedication to my diet than I do, diet and working out than I do anything else. And that's how you have to be. That's the only way that this works. If you're only 25% or 50% in this or you just want to, you know, lose some weight for vanity, it's not going to happen. You can try until you're blue in the face and you will not succeed. You have to get to a point where, I mean, my dad likes to call it the significant emotional event that is going to make you change your life. And when I walked into my doctor and she put me on a scale that I have refused to step on for two years and I saw 262 pop up, I'm five foot five. That is ridiculously overweight for someone who is five foot five, especially someone who has weighed 150 pounds her entire life, played a varsity sport all four years of high school and two years of college. I'm sorry, it's unacceptable. And when I saw that number pop up, I walked out of that place knowing that that was the last day I was going to see that damn number. So until you all hit your significant emotional event, whether that's seeing that number on the scale, whether that's having a stranger tell you that you're fat, I mean, that, you know, that is triggering. That is horrible to hear. And some kids, you God love them, but they have no filter and they will say whatever. Um, not dating because you're too worried about your weight or you know, breaking up with people because you feel ashamed of your body or, I mean, there's so many things that could be the trigger that makes you change how your life is going to go. And for me, it was going to field school. It was seeing that I was the heaviest girl there. It was seeing that number on the scale pop up, being told that I may potentially never be able to have a kid, that I could be diabetic, that I could have a thyroid disorder that, you know, I could have a heart attack if I don't get my weight under control. That was my significant emotional event. Also seeing pictures from the summer back then to now keeps me from falling off the wagon. It keeps me from rolling through McDonald's drive through for a milkshake. It keeps me from going to the movie theater and eating a medium popcorn and a soda by myself. That'll never happen again. And that's why I say until you hit rock bottom where you feel like there is nothing that's going to work for you, that's when you're going to start making the commitment. That's when you're going to sign on. You're going to do what you need to do. And you have to have that motivation. If you don't have a support system, make your own. Be your own. I have a family who wanted me to be healthy, but they didn't jump all over eating vegetarian or trying to be vegan or trying to eat organic because it's more expensive. You know, they picked and chose what they wanted to do to help me out. And that's how they are. That's their right to be that way. So I had to start being my own advocate. I had to start being my own support system. 
you know, I had friends who were smaller than me in dieting and working out. And when I started catching up with them, they got jealous. They didn't want to hang out. They, you know, I told them I don't want to, I don't want to go out to events where everything is involving food. I'd rather go on a hike. I'd rather go downtown and walk around. I don't want to be at a restaurant. I don't want to be at a bar. You know, people thought that that was me being, I, I don't know, some kind of elitist asshole about, you know, what I was doing. But you got to be that um, because nobody's going to lose weight for you and nobody is going to control your diet or watch your food. So you really got to pay attention to that stuff. It's very important to do it. Um, you know, there's tons of diabetic cookbooks. There's tons of low GI cookbooks. There is tons of things on the Internet that you control through about how to get started on low GI. I mean, you know, just making small choices in the beginning, you know, opting for a salad, ditching fries, you know, avoiding you know carrots because they turn to sugar i didn't know that in the beginning now i do onions turn to sugar uh corn turns to sugar potatoes does nothing for you i mean they're okay to have every once in a while but they don't they are not a nutrient they are not something we need to have it's just something that we think we have to have with every meal um bread i was raised on bread peanut butter sandwiches is like one of my top five favorite foods i can no longer have that now i have celery with peanut butter i get my fix other ways so it's all about just seeing what's going to work for you, but you got to, you got to make that decision. You got to make a lifestyle change. And you know, the more people that you have that's willing to help you or, you know, that's going to be there for you, the better. It's definitely easier with somebody who's pushing you, but you got to push yourself and us making these videos. I think it's great. We're bringing such information to everybody and we all have different symptoms and we all have different backgrounds and we all have different things that we did. Um, so I hope that, you know, somebody gets motivated by this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave comments. I will write back and I hope you all have a great day.